If you want to learn more about ancient hominids and ancient inventions or ancient structures or ancient queens or new discoveries in the field of archaeology, then subscribe to the channel, click that bell icon and leave me a comment and share this video because that will help me out a lot. Let's get into the video. Denisovans are the first group of archaic humans that have been discovered based on their DNA alone. although. This was actually an accident. The Denisovans were first identified in 2010, after the discovery of a finger bone in the Denisova cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia in Russia. Up until 2010, we had no knowledge of this species or subspecies of archaic humans. But as time goes by and technology advances and more research has been done, we will learn more and more about them, which I find very exciting. I would also like to note one thing real quick. Just because evidence of Denisovans was first found in the Denisova cave in Siberia in Russia does not mean that they necessarily originated from that area. They lived in a bigger area as we now know from evidence discovered in China and their descendants lived in a massive area reaching all the way down to Australia. My name is Kaylee, and in this video we're going to take a look into everything that we know about the Nisovans at this point in time. Because research will continue to be carried out and we will keep learning more about them. And there are things that I will skim over because, you know, um, I can't cover every base and I will make dedicated videos to certain parts in the future. In the Siberian Altai mountain range in Russia near the border of Kazakhstan, China and Mongolia is the Denisova cave located. This cave was named after a hermit who lived there in the 18th century known as Denis. In the 1970s, Russian paleontologist Nikolai Ovodov first inspected the cave for fossils in his search for remains of Canidae or better known to us, dogs, fossils of dogs. Because yeah, you do that in a cave in Siberia. <laughs> but thankfully he did that. In 2008, more research was done in the cave by archaeologists from the Russian Academy of Sciences and the Siberian branch of the Russian Academy of Sciences. During their investigation, they discovered a finger bone from a teenage female hominin that was thought to have lived somewhere between 50,000 and 30,000 years ago. Although more research has been done into this particular piece of bone and it is now estimated that the female lived somewhere between 76,200 and 51,600 years ago. The finger bone was originally called X-Woman because the matrilineal mitochondrial DNA extracted from the bone showed that it belonged to a genetically distinct ancient hominin, contemporary with Neanderthals and modern humans. In total, we have fossils belonging to six different distinct Denisovan individuals, and these were all found in the Denisova cave. These individuals have been identified through their DNA, and they are known as Denisova II, Denisova III, also known as X-Woman, Denisova IV, Denisova VIII, Denisova XI, and Denisova XIII. The oldest fossil from the Denisova cave is Denisova II. It belongs to an adolescent female and it was a baby molar, which of course showed that she wasn't an adult yet. She lived somewhere between 195,000 and 122,700 years ago. And this was actually the very first fossil of Denisovan discovered in the Denisova cave all the way back in 1984. Although it was attributed to have come from a Neanderthal until they did the DNA research and they discovered that it belonged to a Denisovan. Denisova 11, or otherwise known as Denny, is significant for a very different reason, and the fossil belonging to this body was discovered in 2012. The fossil is a piece of either an arm or a leg bone, and this was another adolescent female, approximately 13 years of age, and she lived approximately 90,000 years ago. This is the only Denisovan Neanderthal hybrid that we know of at this point in time. She is a first-generation archaic hybrid, and research has uncovered that she had a Neanderthal mother and a Denisovan father. Of course, we know that interbreeding happened between Neanderthals, Denisovans, and modern humans later on, but this 
is the very first time that we have found a first generation hybrid of two distinct different species. I am planning a dedicated video on Jenny very soon, so instead of me going completely into that, we're just going to move on because I will cover it in a dedicated video. All Denisovan fossils came from this one location, the Denisova cave in Siberia, and their DNA was discovered to be carried by many people in Asia, Indonesia, and all the way down south to Australia. But in 2019, a research group in China discovered that a partial mandible found in the Baisha cave on the Tibetan plateau in China belonged to a Denisovan. They were not able to extract DNA from this bone, but they were able to do an ancient protein analysis that contained collagen and found that this specimen had close affiliation to the Denisovans from the Denisova cave. They were able to date this fragment to be more than 160,000 years old and the surrounding sediment layer showed that the Denisovans that lived in the area had lived there at least between 100,000 and 60,000 years ago. Although they may have lived there much earlier until much more recent, the time gap could be bigger. So now that we know a little about the fossilized pieces that have been discovered from the Denisovans and the DNA that has been extracted, it's time to look into who they were from the evidence that we now know. So let's take a look at what we know about the DNA and what clues it gives us on the evolution of the Denisovans in comparison to the Neanderthals and modern humans. Sequenced mitochondrial DNA that has been preserved by the cool climate of the Denisova cave was extracted for research. If you're wondering how cool the climate is in the area of the Denisova cave, well, I'll tell you, <laughs> it averages around a freezing temperature throughout the year, which is pretty chilly if you ask me. I hate cold temperatures. <laughs> I really, really hate cold temperatures. I'm not made for the cold. Moving to England is not a good idea for me because it's cold there as well, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Moving on. The researchers discovered that the mitochondrial DNA of the Nisevans differ on 385 of the 16,500 bases or nucleotides with modern humans. To put this in perspective a bit, modern humans and Neanderthals only differ on 202 of the 16,500 nucleotides. To give another comparison for fun, because we do like to look at the bigger picture when we look into these hominids and you know, the difference in nucleotides between modern humans and, for instance, chimpanzees is about 1,462 of the 16,500. So that's a bigger gap, but still quite close enough. So when we put this mitochondrial DNA information together as a puzzle, we can clearly see that Neanderthals and humans are very closely resembling each other in their DNA, and that it's quite apparent that the Denisovans differ quite a bit more from modern humans. This suggests that the Denisovans were the descendants of an earlier migration of Homo erectus out of Africa, as the DNA shows us that they have diverged from Neanderthals and modern humans between 1,313,000 years ago. Modern humans and Neanderthals diverged somewhere between 618,000 and 321,200 years ago. It's a numbers game. Sorry for all the numbers. I'll put them in the subtitles. So if you can't hear them, just look at the subtitles. But this wasn't the only type of DNA research that has been done on the Denisovans. Aside from the mitochondrial DNA, they also did nuclear DNA testing. And through that, the researchers discovered that the Denisovans and Neanderthals were actually much more closely related to each other than both of them were related to modern humans. Just to recap, Neanderthals and humans only differed on 202 nucleotides. And I couldn't necessarily find the information in my current research but I'll I'll be diving into this more when I do the comparison between like all the different archaic humans uh, like the comparison between uh, Neanderthals and Denisovans and modern humans and Neanderthals and Denisovans and modern humans and you know that sort of stuff but this does show that the Denisovans and the Neanderthals are more closely related to each other, then both of them are two modern humans. 
So even though humans and Neanderthals only differed on 202 nucleotides, we can conclude from that information from the nuclear DNA that the Denisovans and the Neanderthals probably differ less than 202 nucleotides, even though the Denisovans differ on a lot more nucleotides with modern humans. The nuclear DNA actually tells a different story than the mitochondrial DNA, as in the modern humans split off way earlier from the common ancestor of the Neanderthals and Denisovans, as you can see on screen. I also would like to preface that the probable reason that modern humans and Neanderthals don't differ as much when it comes to like these nucleotides is because they interbred a lot more. And in modern times, there is quite a number of inhabitants of this planet living and breathing at the moment that have up to 4% Neanderthal DNA in them. I think like the average percentage is between one and 2%, but still that is quite a bit. And we have less of that global spread with Denisovans. So we could look into, and I think that this is something that's very important and I didn't script this, so that's very, very bad of me. I do feel like that the people with the highest percentage of Denisovan DNA, that's up to 5% and it's the um, Aita culture from the Philippines, I think that their DNA has to be researched and then compared to the Denisovan DNA to see on how many to see on how many nucleotides they differ because it could possibly be that they differ on less nucleotides than for instance a European person in modern times that does not have Denisovan DNA within them. This is the speciation of modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans using the Homo heidelbergensis remains found at Cima de los Huesos in the Sierra de Atapuerca in Spain. When looking at the last common ancestor between the humans and the chimpanzees known as Hominini, we can trace back when the Neanderthal Denisovan line split from the line that eventually became the modern humans. This split happened some 750,000 years ago and we have discovered that the Denisovans split from the Neanderthals approximately 473,000 years ago, which probably explains why they don't differ as much on nucleotides. Homo heidelbergensis is considered to be the direct ancestor of Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans. The mitochondrial DNA from the Homo heidelbergensis femur that is 400,000 years old that was discovered in the Cima de los Huesos cave in Spain was discovered to be related to Denisovans and Neanderthals, but most closely related to that of the Denisovan specimen that have been discovered so far. So now it's time to look into the Denisovan migration across the globe. Like I said at the start of this video, just because the only fossilized remains of Denisovans are discovered in Siberia and China, does not mean that they were secluded to live in just those areas. In fact, DNA in modern humans living across the globe in present times actually tells us a story about the migration of the Denisovans. Denisovans spread across Western Eurasia, East Asia, New Guinea and Oceania. But it's the New Guinea and Oceania lineages that are of most interest here. The group of Denisovans that spread to this area seem to have migrated, but they seem to have not migrated back to the West. The highest percentages of Denisovan DNA is found in Australia, the Philippines, Indonesia, Polynesia and Micronesia. Inhabitants there can have up to 5% Denisovan DNA, with the highest percentages found in the indigenous Aika Magbukon people in the Philippines and the Aboriginals in Australia. There is one very peculiar thing when it comes to Denisovan DNA that is found in modern humans in modern times, as there is no Denisovan DNA found in Europeans and Africans in modern times, except, <laughs> and this you'll probably find just as intriguing as me, researchers have discovered that in the modern Icelandic genome, up to 3.3% is Denisovan DNA which means that they are the only Europeans living in modern times with Denisovan DNA inside them that's been passed down through their lineage. This could have spread here in two different ways. 
either a Denisovan group split off into Europe and didn't interbreed with the Neanderthals and or modern humans until they reached the area of modern day Iceland, which if you remember Doggerland was a thing. So they could have walked there because it was connected to both mainland Europe and Scandinavia. But it's also possible that the Denisovans and Neanderthals that have interbred with each other migrated to the area of modern day Iceland without interbreeding with the other Neanderthals and modern humans in the rest of Europe. I personally think, and I would like to preface, this is a personal hypothesis. Do not take my word for it. Do not take this as fact. Do not take this as me stating that I know this because I don't, but I personally think that there was a group of Denisovans and possible Neanderthals and even possible Denisovan Neanderthal hybrids that migrated to the Icelandic area by moving along the Scandinavian lands. So moving along north and not through mainland Europe. So not through like the area of Austria or France, not like that. This way, it's no surprise that there is no Denisovan DNA found in modern humans in Europe besides Iceland. To me, it's the best explanation for a migration route that I can think of, but you don't have to agree with me. So. Now that we know all of that information, what do we know about what Denisovans looked like? Well, as you can imagine, there is little known about the anatomy of Denisovans because we only have a small amount of physical remains and the ones that we do have are either very small in size, partial sized, like a piece of a bone that we, could be a leg or an arm bone, <laughs> or their teeth and therefore they are not indicative of their appearance. The parietal bone skull fragment that was found of a Denisovan was most reminiscent to that of the Homo erectus. The finger bone that was discovered was most reminiscent with the finger bone of a modern human. And the mandible and molars that have been discovered are reminiscent with Neanderthals, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and even to that of Australopithecines. That's a massive group of archaic humans. So trying to figure out what they looked like becomes incredibly difficult when you have the knowledge that all these archaic humans looked vastly different from each other. It's impossible. When looking at their DNA, we can conclude that they most closely resemble the appearance of Neanderthals. And there have been facial reconstructions carried out like the ones that you currently see on the screen right now. And there are depictions on the proposed skull shapes like I'm showing you on the screen at this point in time. And I've used this picture in the past in a video, but I would like to note that these skulls are not depicted to scale. Because, <clears throat> let's be honest, many people that saw me use that picture in a video in the past left me comments saying that the Denisovans were giants or they ended up asking me if Denisovans could have been giants. And the answer to that is no. Their skulls were most likely equally as large as the Neanderthal skulls that we've discovered, since they are most closely related. So we can conclude that the appearance of the Denisovans would have resembled the appearance of Neanderthals mostly. So no, Denisovans weren't a race of giant archaic humans. They were just as large as Neanderthals and most likely would have looked very similar to Neanderthals. And with that closing statement, we have reached the end of this particular video, but don't be sad that it's ending here because like I said, I will be looking into Denny, the Denisovan Neanderthal hybrid first generation. Very, very intrigued by that. I will be looking into the differences between the Neanderthals and Denisovans, the differences between the Denisovans and modern day humans, and the differences between Neanderthals and modern day humans. I will also be looking into Homo heidelbergensis and Homo erectus, Homo habilis, um, Australopithecus, you name it. We will cover them because we are going on this journey into the lineages of archaic humans and eventually which led up to us modern day humans. But we're only the last chapter of this entire story or however you want to call that. There's so much for me to cover and I'm excited to do that with you guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
If you enjoyed watching this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos and click that bell icon if you want to be notified every time I upload or do a very impromptu live stream out of the blue because I sometimes do that. My apologies. I like that. Just out of the blue decide, oh, I'm going live. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then click the card in the upper right corner or a link in the description down below or click one of the videos in the end card because I always put links and videos everywhere you can think of. And I would like to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. Thank you so much for your support of me and my work here on the channel. And you guys really make me feel like what I'm doing is worth something. And we're nearing 50,000 subscribers on the channel at this point in time of me filming. Um, never thought that I would even come close to that. So I'm absolutely blown away. I hope to grow the channel more because I would like to be able to live on my own soon and like start this next chapter in life. But, you know, I do need to like save up some money and get some things arranged. British Embassy and like what type of visa I need to have and apply for to be able to live in the UK like that's apparently a thing of its own we will experience that and um, do I have bloopers I don't I don't necessarily think I really have bloopers I used the teleprompter app again and I went completely wrong a couple times a couple times I'm completely wrong woman <laughs> Come on, come on, come